Hey everyone. ChatGPTaylor aka Taylor here. Welcome back to the channel. Today will be a continuation of the This Venture Camp Top 5 series. This series counts down my top 5 lists of certain topics related to This Venture Camp. Last time, I talked about 5 survivor challenges that I would like to see in This Venture Camp. This video will look at something different. If there are any ideas for this series that you would like to see me play out, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, let's get started. Before I begin, make sure to like and subscribe if this video is to your liking, and make sure to comment down below if there's anything that you would like to see going forward. Today's topic is something that I thought about after seeing a tweet by this Venture Camp co-creator Jared Madrigal. The topic is, 5 possible format adjustments for this Venture Camp. Based on one of Jared's tweets, there will be format adjustments in future this Venture Camp seasons. Before we continue, let's assume and establish a base format for the series, based on the first two seasons of the show. The season starts out with two teams. Each pre-merge episode features a challenge, where one team loses and votes out one of their teammates, repeating this process until the merge. At the merge, the challenges are individual, and the merge group of campers continue to vote out one person per episode. Once the competition is down to three campers, the finale is a challenge, where the winner of the challenge is declared the winner of the season. If this is the base format, then there are plenty of format adjustments that can be made. In Season 3, we've already seen and been informed of some format adjustments. These adjustments include starting with three teams instead of the traditional two, and featuring a comeback competition where one eliminated camper gets to re-enter the competition. Therefore, this video will count down my top 5 list of format adjustments that could be introduced into future this venture camp seasons, based on my perception of what would be good for the show. And with that, let's start with number 5. The number 5 format change that I would like to see in this venture camp is the introduction of a jury vote for the finale. Seasons 1 and 2 of this venture camp had challenges decide the winner of the show, and it seems likely that the finale of this venture camp all-stars will be a challenge as well. Therefore, I feel like having a finale where the eliminated campers vote for a winner would be a good change of pace for the show. Now, one of the common concerns that I've seen regarding a vote-based finale is that having the finale decided by a vote could result in a deserving winner being robbed due to a bitter jury. Yes, in real life, this is an actual possibility, because the creators of the show can control how the campers feel. But keep in mind that this is a scripted online show. If the writers wanted to, they could just make the eliminated campers not be bitter. And if you ask me, a deserving winner should be able to manage the eliminated campers well enough to not make too many enemies. After all, look at how many campers were on Miriam's side in the season 1 finale. Another concern that I've seen regarding vote-based finales is that it can be a bit boring. After all, watching an intense race is usually more exciting than watching people cast votes. But I think there's a lot of drama that can take place during a vote-based finale. If each eliminated camper gets to ask a question to the finalists to help them make their decision on who to vote for, there's potential for some arguments to erupt between campers. Imagine it's season 1, and the eliminated campers get to ask Miriam, Ellie, and Fiori questions. Jake has the opportunity to blow up at Ellie once again, and Ellie gets another chance to shut Jake down, knowing that she'll never get his vote even if she apologized. Ashley gets a chance to confront Fiori about all of her manipulation, and Fiori gets to remain steadfast, self-assured with who she is as a person. And perhaps Gret can ask Miriam why she deserves to win when Fiori was able to manipulate everyone, giving Miriam a chance to explain her gameplay and leave no doubt that she is more than deserving to be the winner of season 1. All in all, I think there's benefits to having a vote-based finale instead of a challenge finale, both from a drama perspective and a writing perspective. However, the reason why I have it at the bottom of this list is because I don't think it should be used all the time. Definitely once, and maybe twice. But any more than that, and I think the audience might get tired of it. The next item on this list might not get as tiring, though. The number 4 format change that I would like to see in future seasons is the usage of a schoolyard pick to decide teams. So far, each this venture camp season had the teams decided by the host or members of production. But I think there are some benefits that come with letting the campers pick the teams themselves. Depending on when the schoolyard pick happens, there can be different storylines that branch from this format adjustment. Let's say the schoolyard pick happens at the start of the season. The first challenge is an individual challenge, where the first two campers to complete the challenge become the team captains. They pick the first camper for their respective team, and from then on the person that was just picked makes the next pick for their team. This format adjustment forces the campers to act on first impressions, and can result in tight bonds being formed or enemies being made. Let's use Season 2 as an example. Let's say Hunter becomes one of the captains and picks Tess as his first teammate. Hunter would hope that picking her first would show that he's willing to trust her, which could be the start of them liking each other. Conversely, let's say we get to the end and Carol is the last camper remaining. 
This can make Carol even more upset with the cast, further emphasizing her poor attitude and weakening her relationships with the others. And imagine if Yul has to pick someone for his team, and he wants to pick Ryo, but can't remember her name. Instead, he refers to her with a bad nickname such as An alliance with Curry Girl? What's her name again? Ria? Not only does it start their relationship off on the wrong foot, but it quickly establishes the kind of character that Yul is, which is good for writing. Thus, there are a lot of storylines that can arise from picking teams at the start. But let's say that the schoolyard pick is used to decide new teams at a team swap. This could also bring up new storylines depending on what happens. Let's use season 1 as an example, with the swap happening immediately after Lil and Ashley's elimination. If Gabby gets to pick first, the expectation is for her to pick someone from her original team, probably Gret. But due to Gabby's admiration for Ellie, Gabby picks Ellie instead. This could cause some friction between Gabby and her original teammates, which adds drama to the show. Additionally, imagine if Alec has to pick the next camper for his team. Fiori is expecting Alec to pick her since they are allies. But keep in mind that Alec's team lost many challenges. Since Fiori isn't a strong challenge competitor, and Alec might not want to lose more challenges, what if he picks someone stronger such as Tom? This could cause Fiori to get upset at Alec, which provides another source of drama to write about. When looking at providing events to write about, choosing teams through a schoolyard pick can definitely provide those for the show. The reason why I don't have it any higher is because there are only so many storylines that can come from this kind of format adjustment, and I wouldn't be surprised if it got stale after 3 or 4 uses. However, I don't think the next adjustment on this list will face that kind of problem. The number 3 format change that I would like to see in future seasons is the implementation of a team swap. Out of everything on this list, this is the only one that I think will actually be used in this Venture Camp All-Stars. I think team swaps have a lot of utility, especially in longer seasons like this Venture Camp All-Stars. There's the possibility for team swaps to save certain campers from an almost certain elimination, while screwing over other campers who are in a more advantageous position. Let's use Season 2 as an example, starting from Episode 4. On the green team, Rhea is clearly in trouble as the majority alliance of Yul, Ali, Tess, and Hunter is in power. And on the orange team, James and Aiden are outnumbered by the friendship alliance of Maggie, Lake, and Rosa Maria. But let's say that a team swap occurs. The orange team is now Rosa Maria, James, Aiden, Yul, and Ali. And the green team is now Lake, Maggie, Tess, Hunter, and Rhea. Looking at the orange team, Ali, Yul, and Rosa go from being in positions of power to being separated from key parts of their alliance. And on the green team, Rhea goes from being outnumbered to being the swing vote between two incomplete alliances. This shows how all it takes is a team swap to turn the whole game upside down. But what if you don't want the game to be shaken up so much? Well here's another benefit to a team swap. This allows the campers to interact with a larger portion of the cast. In season 2, it seems like the two teams largely did not interact with each other pre-merge, considering how when Lake and Hunter were paired together, Lake noted that it was the first time they ever talked. So having a team swap allows for new connections and bonds to be made without campers having to sneak away from camp in order to talk to people who aren't on their team. Like the usage of schoolyard picks, having team swaps opens the door for more writing opportunities. And unlike schoolyard picks, I think you could get away with having this in multiple future seasons. But the reason why it's not higher is because I feel like the other two items on this list have more options available on how to execute them. And with that, let's dive into one of them right now. The number two format change that I would like to see in future seasons is the usage of more than one team going to an elimination ceremony. Now, we've already seen this happen in season 1 episode 6, but I think this concept can be taken even further than what we've seen so far in order to add drama and spice up the show. There are two examples of this adjustment that I want to suggest in this section. The first adjustment is a two-team elimination ceremony. This example should really only be used when there are three teams. In this adjustment, one team wins immunity, and the other teams have to go to the same elimination ceremony. They will all vote as one group, and only one camper will be voted out at the ceremony. Let's use this Venture Camp All-Stars as an example. Let's say Team Yellow wins immunity, leaving Team Cyan and Team Magenta to go to the elimination ceremony together. Team Cyan has 5 members, and Team Magenta has 4 members, so at first glance, you might think that Team Cyan has the majority and can vote out whoever they want from Team Magenta. But it's not that simple. We know that Tom doesn't like Ellie that much, and Aiden is probably still upset from Lake being voted out, so what if they flip and join Team Magenta in voting for Ellie? What if Tess flips in order to join Ali in the vote? Or vice versa? What if Jake flips to take out Fiori? What if Ellie flips to take out Tom? These pre-existing connections allow for drama to take place during the ceremony, so it's not as simple as one team having more numbers than the other. 
Thus, adding this adjustment opens the door for plenty of drama field writing possibilities. Another adjustment would have only one team vote someone out, but another team gets to listen in on the losing team's elimination ceremony. Let's use episode 3 of All Stars as an example for this adjustment. Let's say that Team Cyan loses and has to vote someone out, but Team Magenta's reward for finishing the challenge first is to listen in on Team Cyan's elimination ceremony. Now Team Magenta gets to watch as Ellie throws Lake under the bus and the entire team falls into chaos. This gives Team Magenta key information on the interactions and alliance structures on Team Cyan. And if you want to spice up the ceremony even more, you could even give Team Magenta the ability to give one member of Team Cyan immunity. Imagine what happens if they agree to give immunity to Lake. In that instance, Ellie is virtually screwed, causing her plan to backfire right in her face. Drama served on a silver platter. Again, these format adjustments are all in the name of adding drama and writing opportunities to the season. And the ability to tailor this adjustment to the season depending on the already existing plotlines is what makes me rank this adjustment so highly. However, the reason why I don't have it at number 1 is because the one I have above it can be used in a wider variety of contexts, making it more usable. And without further ado, let's talk about the number 1 adjustment. The number one format change that I would like to see in future seasons is the usage of unique formats for challenges. Excluding the ones in the finales, the challenges generally follow the same format. Everyone in the challenge competes for the same prize, and whoever wins the challenge gets the prize, whether it be immunity, a reward, or both. Based on this format, there are plenty of adjustments that can be made to spice up challenges in multiple seasons. For example, you could turn an individual challenge into an auto-elimination challenge, where the person who finishes in last place during the challenge is automatically eliminated from the competition. Let's use the challenge from the 10th episode of Season 2 as an example. We know that the last camper with balloons remaining wins immunity. But what if the first person to lose all of their balloons is automatically eliminated? Would the Alliance of Four stick to targeting Hunter? Or would someone like James take out Rosa Maria immediately to ensure that he won't be automatically eliminated? That's some food for thought. But one example that I really think would work is to have multiple prizes up for grabs, but the campers can only choose one prize to compete for. Therefore, you only have to beat the people who are competing for the same prize as you. This kind of challenge would allow the characters to show what they truly value in a competition for a million dollars, as well as potentially sparking conflict between campers based on what they chose. Imagine a situation where there's an alliance of six desperate to take out the challenge beast of the season. In this challenge, the campers can choose between competing for immunity, a phone call from home, and a portable shower. The challenge beast obviously chooses to compete for immunity. In response, the leader in the alliance suggests that they all compete for immunity in order to increase the odds of them beating the challenge beast. However, all of their allies choose to compete for the other rewards. This could cause the alliance leader to blow up at their allies for not following their lead. And if the challenge beast does win immunity, this blow up could be enough to get the leader voted out, fracturing the alliance and giving the challenge beast a chance to weave their way in and make some new allies. Now, it wouldn't make sense to use this for every single challenge, but having it for one individual challenge could help add suspense and excitement to a season if it's used correctly. That's what it's all about. Finding ways to make the show even more exciting than it already is. And that about does it for this video. What did you think of the video? Do you agree with my choices? Do you disagree? If you were a writer for this venture camp, what format changes would you make to the show? Either way, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like the video, click subscribe if you really like the video, and for some ending words of wisdom. If you ever compete on a big reality show, be careful with how you treat others, because it could come back to bite you if you end up in a jury vote with no supporters. Thank you, and farewell.